All right, well, it's super awesome to be here um, for the second NDC Town Hall. Tonight, as you all know, we're gonna be focusing on the topic of advocacy. advocacy, excuse me. If you're excited, I hope to see you make some reactions, make sure that you're utilizing the chat. Um, I want to introduce myself briefly. I'm Dr. Arnell Wright. I'm the 17th district representative to the ADA's New Dentist Committee. And on behalf of the entire New Dentist Committee, we want to welcome you and thank you all for being here. Um, I live in Orlando, if you guys don't know that. In addition to serving on the NDC, I'm also one of the, um, I was a past subcommittee member of the, the chairman of the subcommittee on new dentist engagement. And I'm also one of the hosts of the Dental Sound Bites podcast. Um, and I'm also socially known as the Daily Dentist. Um, so tag me, give me a shout out. Um, I'm super thrilled to be here with my amazing colleague, Dr. Bryce Larson, um, and our friends here to talk about advocacy. So if you are excited, I'm going to pass the baton to Bryce. We are going to talk about advocacy, particularly new ways um, for dentists to get involved and to shake things up. So Bryce, I am going to pass it off to you. That's tough to follow. Um, Arnell, you always have so much energy. It's great to be here I'm hosting with you tonight. Um, hi, everyone. I'm, I'm Bryce Larson. I'm the um, new dentist um, committee representative for the 8th, 8th district, which is Illinois. Um, I practice in Naperville, which is a west suburb. Um, and uh, we're happy to have you guys here tonight. Uh, a few reminders um, before we kind of jump in here. Um, video optional, but encouraged. We'd love to see your smiling face. Um, if you are not speaking, please mute um, so we can keep the background noise at a minimum. And um, participation, we'd love to have you guys um, help us out and participate, use the chat, um, raise a hand, and we'll try to keep everybody um, in order as we see those. Um, uh, comments come up. Um, we are recording um, the meeting tonight or the event, um, and we'll, it'll be up on the website on um, ada.org slash new dentist committee. Um, so don't be shy. Um, jump in, um, you know, put put in on the chat, raise a hand, um, and we'll get to you at some point here. Um, our first town hall was back in September. It was awesome. Um, you can find that on the website, and then um, we'll soon have this posted after tonight's event. Um, so um, advocacy, right? Here we are. Um, we're going to hit on as many things as we can tonight, um, including the Massachusetts ballot initiative. And we're going to talk about different ways to be engaged in the conversation because it's um, it's a big topic. Um, it's an involved topic, and we're going to use our uh, panelists here tonight to tell that story. Um, we'll have time for some open Q&A, and um, we'll get to um, talking about a few specifics, but also some you know general things coming up. Um, before we get to the panel, um, we certainly wanted to um, recognize a few other people who are very active, involved, um, actively involved in advocacy. And um, first um, is our friend, Dr. John Vogel. Um, he's a fellow New Dentist Committee member from the state of Texas, and he also serves on ADPEC, which is the American Dental Political Action Committee. Um, so John, take a minute, tell us briefly about ADPEC and what you do on the committee, please. Yeah, well, thank you for the introduction, Bryce. Um, so I'm the New Dentist Rep from Texas, District 15, and the New Dentist Liaison to ADPEC. Um, so what ADPAC is, it's the Political Action Committee of the American Dental Association. So it's what basically um, <clears throat> puts a lot of action to the policy that the ADA votes on at the House of Delegates. It puts it into action and makes it come to fruition uh, when it comes to legislative initiatives. So they have been, and I know my grandma is going to go uh, talk about this a lot, but they've been very successful in getting a lot of legislation passed in the last couple of years, including the uh, Dental Health Act of 2018, um, the McCarran-Ferguson Repeal Act, um, and many others. And so what I do on the uh, Political Action Committee is I bring the voice of new dentists and a different generation to the um, Political Action Committee. And we're also a voting member on the PAC. So it gives uh, a greater voice to the new dentists. And I can guarantee you that uh, that is important because we do have votes where things are very, uh, very tight and decided by one vote. 
So we do have power as new dentists on the political on ADPAC. So thank you. I just want to give that brief in introduction. Thanks, John. You're awesome. Um, so knowledgeable. Um, thank you for all that you do um, through ADPAC and for your involvement there. Um, and at this time, um, we're going to launch our first poll. We're going to jump right into that. Um, you should see it pop up on your screen here in a minute. Um, take a second um, to answer, and then we're going to talk through some results. I like these questions. Yeah, those are very, very good questions. Has everybody taken a moment to answer? There were two questions on your screen. If so, Melissa, can we show those results? Yes, and I apologize. It looks like both launched at once. Um, I think you- Oh, that's okay. Could, okay, um, but it looks like some people are still kind of going. So let me just give them a few more seconds. Yeah, of course. In the meantime, while we're waiting for everybody um, to finish, oh, there we go. All right. So as you can see for our very first question, how interested in, are you in receiving or continuing to receive alerts from the ADA on advocacy issues? Most of you guys are very, very interested. And um, all of you, a lot of you said that you have a more positive perception now after the Massachusetts ballot initiative. So that is very, very good to see. Um, if you want to see more of these alerts, you can sign up for them. Um, you all at ADA org backslash engaged and it's really really important for um, you all to stay engaged um, and our, our very next guest who's going to be coming up Dr. Dan Gessick he knows that very very well so Dr. Gessick is the chair of the Council on Government Affairs Dr. Gessick we'd love to welcome you and give you a few moments to say a few words wow well thank you Arnell I appreciate it boy there's a lot of energy in the room uh, it's great to see another member of the 17th uh, in a leadership role. Thanks for doing what you're doing. We appreciate it. And thank you all um, for allowing me to speak to the town hall tonight. My name is Dan Gessick, and I'm the Council on Governmental Affairs Chair for the American Dental Association. And I want to talk to you about advocacy. It's critical that the dentists participate in advocacy, especially our younger dentists. New dentists are the future of our profession, and your advocacy is going to help ensure that this future is as bright as ever. Without advocacy, the federal and state governments won't know how to help the new dentist. For example, you need to lend your voice to issues that directly affect the younger dentist, like student loan reform. But you also want to keep in mind that all dentists have issues like dental insurance reform. So this is especially true for our younger dentists. When you go to see this congressman, the congresswomen, and the senators, the, the legislators, if you will, a lot of times you're going to meet with their staffers. And a lot of staffers are young and you're going to relate very well with them. And when you sit down and you talk to them, you're going to make an impression and you're going to go over what's bothering you and it's going to make a difference to them. They're going to remember you. Now, the ADA Council on Government Affairs is committed to helping the new dentist to become involved in advocacy. For example, last year, the new dentist committee came to CGA and we helped them develop two resolutions, which got passed through the Board of Trustees, as well as the House of Delegates on student loan reform. Also, we work with ASDA and the new dentist committee on lobby day. And a personal story, last year, um, the ADA News published this and a young man who played baseball with my son in high school, he came with us to advocate for my local congressman and we let, his name's Ty Smith from UAB. And I hope he's on, uh, if he's not on, hopefully we'll see him soon. But Ty actually pitched the uh, Ready Act to Congressman John Rutherford. Well, he did such a great job the next day that John, he did it to the aide because the, the, the congressman was in the home district and he did such a great job that he signed on to the Ready Act the next day. So your, your hard work makes a difference. And that's why it's so important that you all come to lobby day and you, you, make, you know, make that meeting with your uh, congressman or your senator, so, or congresswoman, if you will. So please, I'd love to see you at lobby day. And then if you have any other ideas for Council on Government Affairs, any way we can help the new dentist, please don't hesitate to contact us. Now, I wanna thank you again for your interest in advocacy and I'm so glad to see this enthusiasm you all have. This is great. This is a lot of power and I love it. Um, we also have a new uh, member dentist representative on CGA and his name is Dr. Sean Aiken. 
Now, Sean actually, interesting enough, also was a baseball player. But Sean actually came from Atlanta, and he actually played baseball for four years at William & Mary, and then he went to dental school at Louisville, and he now resides in Louisville. So I'd like to take a minute and ask Sean, if, does he have any words he'd like to say? Uh, thanks for the intro, Dan. Um, obviously, being on this call, I think we're talking to a lot of other people that are very passionate about advocacy. Um, huge win for us in Massachusetts. And so just what Dan is saying and what John is saying, our voice matters. Um, the young dentist voice matters. And when we can stand alongside people like uh, Dan and some of our other friends in the ADA, I think we can go a long way. So really excited. I'm just starting out on CGA, but uh, excited to see what that does and be a new dentist voice for everyone here on this call. So um, thank you guys for the intro and looking forward to the rest of the town hall here. Thanks for that quick hello, Sean. Um, great to have you here tonight. And a very sincere thank you to Dr. Gesick, Dr. Aiken, um, Dr. Vogel, all of our ADPAC and CGA volunteer leaders. We definitely wouldn't be where we are today without all you guys um, and the work that you put in. Um, ADPAC and CGA friends attending tonight will be active in the chat. Um, and I'd like to add in that they're a great resource too after tonight. Um, they're always helpful. Um, and you can reach out to them to, to learn more about our ADA efforts too. All right, so um, that being said, it's my honor and privilege to uh, introduce our panelists for the evening. Um, we have with us tonight um, a, a few people here that um, we'll give some time to. Um, first off, Mike Graham, Senior Vice President of Government and Public Affairs for the ADA. Uh, Chad Olson, Director, State Government Affairs for the ADA. Uh, Peter Aiello, Senior Manager for ADPAC and Political Affairs, and then Dr. Andrew Tonelli, um, who is a co-chair for Governance Affairs Committee in Massachusetts and was um, super involved for the ballot initiative. Um, so we're excited to hear from um, our wonderful panelists tonight. Um, and I'd like to eat, I'd like to have each of you briefly say hello. Um, tell us um, maybe what motivates you in your work or what might be on the horizon that you're excited about most. Um, so Mike, uh, you first. Well, good evening, everybody. And, and thanks for being on this call tonight. I know you can be doing a lot of things, but I have to tell you, advocacy is, is critical to the profession moving forward. Uh, Charlie Norwood, a congressman from Georgia, once said that uh, being involved in advocacy, if you're a, he was a dentist member of Congress from Georgia. And he said, if um, to be involved in advocacy as a dentist is like insurance for the profession and your practice, uh, because you actually have a role in changing um, what happens for you and, and your patient. And what motivates me is, is just that, what we can do to, to help the patients out there, particularly patients that don't have access to care. Um, that's the reason why I was hugely in favor uh, and pushing my team on, on the issue of access to operating, uh, operating rooms in hospitals. And that was a huge victory in my opinion, because as somebody that worked on the Americans with Disabilities Act and was there in the White House when it was signed 32 years ago, um, that's a population of people that that we need to give special attention to. And it's those issues, those patients and you, the dentists, that motivates me every day when I'm knowing I'm what I'm doing, what my team is doing makes a difference in, in those lives. So thanks for inviting us here tonight. That's incredible just to think about all the experience and the, the things that you've seen, Mike. So thanks for all your work and uh, all that you do for us. Um, Chad, you next. Hey everybody, uh, Chad Olson, I'm the Director of State Government Affairs, and uh, it's a pleasure to talk with you tonight. Um, looking forward to the conversation. I've been with the ADA for six years. Prior to coming here, Mike plucked me like an apple off a tree from Delta Dental. Um, I worked for them for 11 years and did federal <clears throat> and state lobbying. Uh, you know, what I, what I like about it, maybe some of you have seen Thank You for Smoking, uh, it's a movie about lobbying and government affairs and things like that. 
what I like about this job and what uh, you know drives me forward is I genuinely like working for you all. I like working for dentists. I like what you all do, the issues that I cover, and uh, I feel like it's important. It gives me a reason to jump out of bed in the morning and, and look forward to doing the work for you all. So thanks for having me again. Awesome. Thanks, Chad. And I, Chad and I just learned tonight that we live like 10, 15 minutes away from each other. So <laughs> pretty cool. Um, Peter, you next. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me tonight. I'm Peter Aiello. I am the Senior Manager of Political Affairs and ADPAC for the ADA. I handle all of the grassroots advocacy and political education that ADPAC does. Prior to joining, I've been with the ADA for seven years. Prior to joining, I was a campaign worker for almost seven years doing democratic campaigns across the country for the, the federal and state level. Uh, so advocacy is kind of in my blood. Um, the kind of the things that kind of motivate me the most is um, the general idea, like there's a Margaret Mead, Mead quote that says, never doubt the, the small and thoughtful group of committed citizens can change the world because indeed it's the only thing that ever has. And that's kind of the thing that we like to put forward here and make sure that everybody's kind of working with it's like we're going to be we can be the change we don't have to wait for everybody else so thank you for having me that's that's great peter thank you for thank you for your thoughts and um wonderful to keep you guys involved and um great to have you tonight so um as we've been talking about advocacy tonight we really wanted to talk about past present and future um and sorry, forgive me. We we wanted to introduce um, Dr. Tonelli. Um, we're trying to get a hold of him. Um, he's um, a little bit late tonight, so we'll um, once he jumps in on the call, we'll um, kind of swing back around to him. But um, anyway, we um, wanted to give an overview of past, present, and future of advocacy. Advocacy. <laughs> it's a lot to discuss. We're going to do our best in the uh, forty-two minutes that we have left. Um, but let's start with present and our, um, our new dentist colleague from the East Coast, um, Dr. Tonelli was super involved in the medical loss ratio initiative that just went through, won by a large margin, and um, he's going to come in, once he comes in, he's going to talk us through his story and how that even happened. Um, one of the questions we're, we're hearing, though, is how other states are going to make or can make similar progress. And as younger dentists and new dentists, we're going to be practicing for a long time. We want to see long-term solutions to the cost of dental care for our, our providers, our colleagues, and patients. Um, you can see on the slide here, the um, Health Institute policy um, just put forward some results and really validated that our friends in Massachusetts are not the only ones who want to see progress. HPI asked, you know, do you believe requiring dental plans to to spend a set percentage of premiums they collect on dental care. And not surprisingly, most every dentist across the country said yes. Um, so our panelists that are um, with us, um, are you guys aware of any other states working on um, similar initiatives? Mike, do you have any idea of um, anything in the works currently? Well, actually, absolutely. In fact, uh, toward the end of the campaign in Massachusetts, we were pivoting to really blow those numbers up you know, we won the question two initiative by a 20, 72 to 28 vote. Um, and we were targeting certain folks in the beginning to make sure we won. But toward the end, we started reaching out to other populations to expand our lead. And we did that. And we knew we wanted to do that because we were going to take this to other states. And um, we have about 20 states that have said, yes, they're going to do this. Or yes, we're strongly interested in doing it. And I'm going to turn it over to Chad, who runs state government affairs, uh, because we just uh, we just went through a spa, a state public affairs um, exercise last night where we uh, made some decisions on funding some states so, uh, to do MLR and other uh, dental insurance issues. So, Chad. Yeah, thanks, Mike. And for those of you that are, may not be familiar, uh, Mike mentioned uh, there's a state public affairs uh, program. It's a grant program. Uh, there are five dentists that decide on applications from the state societies um, where they need a little bit of help uh, financially in terms of advocacy. And this year, uh, following, I think, and I think in a large part as a result of the win in Massachusetts, 
we had the most state societies ever apply for money, and a number of them are pushing uh, medical loss ratio. I'll give you a little bit of a glimpse of two of them. Oklahoma has a bill filed, and also Nevada has a bill filed. Nevada is sort of interesting. They have a, a law from the 80s that set up a medical loss ratio of 75%, but it just sat there, just lay there dormant. No enforcement, no record of any dental insurance company ever not meeting it or meeting it or any reporting. So they're hoping to strengthen that bill. And they have, I think they have a great name for their campaign. They're calling it Patients Over Profits. And they've already got a number of press hits in the Nevada area. So we're very excited. That's awesome. I like that. Uh, I like the name for their campaign. That's wonderful. Um, I think um, Dr. Tonelli's on with us. So we're going to um, get back over to him now. Thank you, uh, Mike and Chad, for giving us your thoughts there. Um, Dr. Tonelli, you there? I'm here. I'm so sorry. Uh, no problem. The, uh, no central problem. time, Eastern time thing bug bit me somehow. But uh, we, were, um, got... we were getting a quick update from um, Mike and Chad about um, the Massachusetts initiative. So, Andrew, take a second, introduce yourself, um, and then tell us how you were involved, give us your story, and um, how New Dennis brought such a, a huge effort toward this initiative and gave such a huge win. Yeah, so uh, I'm Dr. Andrew Tonelli. Um, a fairly new dentist. I graduated in 2014 from Tufts. I practice north of Boston and have, honestly, I got involved um, this is probably about in organized dentistry five or six years ago when we got, I remember getting a letter from, um, you know, the biggest insurer in our state and that said they were going to decrease our reimbursement by 10%. And I'm looking at my student loans and I'm looking at 30 years in dentistry and I'm wondering how, how's that gonna math work out for us? Um, and that was sort of just got me thinking about more than just doing dentistry on a day-to-day -day basis. What's the environment that we operate in? And so I got involved and started getting involved in the, the local chapters and then uh, the government affairs part of um, Massachusetts and thinking a little bit more about um, you know, the policy piece of this. And, you know, basically from the efforts of uh, one individual who uh, in Massachusetts, this managed to find its way to the ballot. And, um, you know, the, the organized dentistry, the Massachusetts Dental Society and the ADA were instrumental in pushing the ballot initiative over the line and giving what is a huge win for dentists. And this is gonna change, um, how we interact with insurance in a very fundamental way. And, um, you know, it's because of people who are engaged, who are thinking, you know, as a as new dentist, it's enough to figure out how to do dentistry really well, right? Um, but we have to also be thinking about the, the economic system that we're operating in, the policy system that we're operating in. And if dentists aren't engaged in that, then somebody else is going to be setting up the rules. And most of those other actors are not going to have the best interest of ourselves and our patients, uh, you know, because we're the ones who have to sit in front of the patients and treat them and make sure that they're getting the, the treatment that they need and deserve. And so it is just so, so important that individual dentists are, take responsibility and of understanding what's going on taking policy initiatives, talking about policy with the, their colleagues and with organized dentistry, and then leveraging the power of organized dentistry, which was really, really demonstrated in this. And we have to thank everybody on this call, Mike, Chad, Peter, you know, they did a huge amount to leverage the resources of the ADA and the fact that dentists can work together to make what should be a really big change, not for just Massachusetts, but hopefully in the coming years for, for many other states and hopefully the whole country. That's what really stuck with me after we talked the other night, um, Andrew, is that this whole initiative came really from one dentist and then the ADA put its power behind the idea and it it was a huge win. It's It's incredible how it happened. 
Um, as a new dentist, how did you feel um, or what was your perspective being involved in the mix? Yeah, I mean, we have as younger dentists sort of more than anybody, it's more important than us to anybody because the, you know, the impacts of this is are, are going to affect us the longest and, you know, not for nothing, but the, the last probably 30 ish years of dentistry were probably like the real bright halcyon days. Like that's when things like really made sense, um, you know, in terms of the entire environment, it's getting more complicated. Now the, the whole business environment of dentistry, there's a, a whole new focus on it. And, um, it's going to be a little bit harder for dentists to, to control that. And our best tools for doing that is, is the ADA. It was really, is really enlightening to, to go through this, to, and it's the most interesting part is going to be what are the downstream effects? Are we going to be able to see that it's making a positive change for change for dentists and patients alike? And that again, all comes down to people being engaged, um, dentists being engaged, and um, you know that's my hope for is people see that this has happened. And you know, one thing that I always think about is that you know there's no dentistry MLR expert out there waiting for this event to happen. You know, nobody's written a PhD thesis on this. So if you take, if individuals take the initiative to learn, dig into the stuff, talk about it, talk about it with legislators, representatives, we have them all coming through our practice too. Like, um, you know, we can be the ones that the affects the change. And again, like the ADA is the, is the hammer when you get to the, the end of the line there of, of pushing something over the line. And all the, the folks here are, are the resource for, you know, making those changes. We have to be thinking, you know, not just about what makes sense today, but what makes sense 5, 10, 15, 20 years downstream for our careers. And, um, you know, everybody can think about that. Everybody can come up with those ideas and state, local, national, dental societies, all of those are, are tools for doing that. Yeah, that's great. Um, and as Andrew said, you know, the, um, everybody saw it happen. Everybody realizes that, you know, the, the ADA can put their weight behind these things and, and make some change and the perception of it, I think, you know, as our other poll indicated, um, you know, the perception of it across the country was just so dramatic too. Um, uh, Melissa, can you bring up that uh, poll one more time? Yeah, so we, we had answered the question a little earlier, you know, did the outcome of the Massachusetts ballot change your perception? Um, and yeah, I think everybody has a more positive view of, of the fact that, you know, we can get things done when we have individuals involved and when we have strength in numbers, um, when we have our, you know, collective weight of ADA membership across the country focused on, you know, benefiting patients. Um, it's a, it's a great thing. So, um, Let's see here. So um, speaking of perception with our poll, uh, back to another question on advocacy past. So Mike, you've got a lot of experience on the Hill as we've heard. Um, what's your perception of the dental profession in Washington or what is the perception of dentistry in Washington? Has it changed? Is it different now than it was? Um, and do people know us as the ADA? I started I started with the ADA in, in uh, 1995. So it's I'm finishing my 28th year. Um, I didn't even know the ADA had a Washington office until a friend of mine said, oh, there's a, a job, a lobbying job open at, at the ADA. And he was actually uh, a guy I grew up with my, today still my best friend who's a dentist. And um, so uh, the ADA had, did not have a large presence in Washington in 1995. Over the years, um, dentistry has gotten much more involved in advocacy, and uh, about every other year, I, I actually commission a poll. We're part of a poll that polls the most influential organizations in Washington, and we are in that group. Um, we're up there. Uh, we, we, in fact, surpassed the AMA in some categories, um, but the one thing we have going for us that outdoes everybody in healthcare and just about every other uh, professional organization is we have you. Dentistry is one of the most respected professions in the country. 
and that respect extends to Capitol Hill. Um, we spend so much uh, less uh, money on the Hill. We spend about one tenth of what the AMA spends, um, but we're right up there with the AMA. As, as what as the consultant who did the poll said to me, said the ADA punches way above its weight. And we rely on the dentists to tell that story. I tell my staff all the time, this is your club. We work for you. Um, and the day that the dentists stop getting involved in advocacy is the day where we will be less influential. It's not about me. It's not about my staff. It's you. And I'll tell you what, um, I challenge all of you on this call to come to the, uh, the lobby day that we have in Washington, D.C. this year. It's from March 5th to March 7th. If you can make it, please be there. I know some of you have been there, but guess what happens when you walk into a member of Congress's office? They don't listen to the older dentists. They wanna hear from you, the new dentist, because you're the future. They wanna know what's gonna happen in the future. They don't care really what happened yesterday. So um, this, I can tell you the ADA has, has gained uh, so much over the years in terms of our influence on the Hill, and it's because of the dentists, and it's especially because of the new dentists and our dental students that, that uh, members of Congress want to hear your voice. That was so good, Mike. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for that um, response. Um, I, I'm just thinking about the history of dentistry, how it's changed. Um, and it makes me think about something that I'm very, very passionate about, which is mentorship. Um, and I, I would love for Peter to answer, what are your thoughts for some ways that younger dentists can get more involved in advocacy? Where could someone look to find a mentor? Where could they look to learn the ropes? Um, so that those dentists continue to be involved in um, the ADA in those advocacy efforts. Well, I think first and foremost, come to lobby day. Um, you know, you have, we have, uh, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 1100 people that come to lobby day. It's uh, about 400 dental students and about uh, 500 dentists. And then as well, the ADA staffers across the board, we have our, you know, state of government affairs, uh, federal government affairs, all of our, um, our individual, um, what are they called? The customer service reps that uh, from the ADA, they're all there. Um, they do a lot of work. We we do our best to train people, make sure that you know you know what you're doing when you go to the the hill. And on top of that, we make sure that there's a lot of time to network in there. Um, I think the thing that the mo the most important thing is showing up. If you show up to these things, you're going to find people. You're going to connect with people, and you're gonna you're gonna find your mentors that way. Uh, look into your states. Um, there are people that have come to Lobby Day, which used to be Washington Leadership Conference way back when, um, for you know 20 years now, and they know how to do this. They know the ropes, and they're more than happy to have you and bring you along. Um, we have a spot for one uh, new dentist from every state. Um, I challenged the new dentist committee uh, through Tara to to fill every one of those slots for Lobby Day and make sure you're all there. Um, so that that's the main the, the important part. The other thing is get involved with your states as well. Um, the state most of most of your individual states do state hill days. Go do that. Uh, be part of that. Go to your the events that that your states put on. Um, you know, work on building relationships. The other thing you can do, and I think as a, as a former political campaign staffer, uh, get involved earlier with members. You know, go don't just go to their office once a year and, you know, bar, go in and say, oh, you know, I'm with the American Dental Association and, and lay on that laurel. You can do a lot more to, to open up doors. You go, go to, you know, if you have a member of Congress you really like, go volunteer in their campaign for a day, make some phone calls for them. They'll remember that. Their staff will remember that. Um, <clears throat> so that that's important. The other thing is signing up for action alerts. So right now I'm going to have you guys do that. If you're not already signed up for your federal action alerts, it's, um, what I need you to do is grab your phone, uh, break out your text messages, punch in 345345 345, and text tooth party to that number, all one word. We'll put it, somebody will put it in the chat for me here. Uh, so it's tooth party to 345-345, and that'll get you signed up through your phone number. It'll give you a link to, to fill out the form to make sure that you are all ready to go. Uh, so tooth party, all one word though. 
um, and you'll get you'll be signed up for our action alerts and answer the action alerts that anytime we want to we send a message um, make sure you, you guys send messages to your members of Congress to that though you can edit those messages a little bit so tell your story Mike mentioned this a little bit that your your story, the dentist story is the most important thing that, that we have. It's the most important tool in the toolbox for us. Um, we nothing that our staff can that the staff can write, uh, no explanation of a bill, no um, idea of how something's going to change the world <clears throat> coming from us is going to have the same impact of a dentist saying in let's say for student loans. I have you know, X amount of student debt, and because of that, I can't buy a practice. I can't uh, practice where I want to. I can't practice in a rural area. Um, some of your constituents are going to suffer because we can't get dental care to them in rural areas. That's going to break be the, the most important thing. Um, there's a group called the Congressional Management Foundation. They do surveys of members of Congress about and their staffs about what sways members the most. Uh, the two big things is in-person meetings, of course, like you go to you go to either your local office or the Hill and you meet with the staff and you meet with the members, you tell tell your story and that, that'll help them get involved in the bill. The other thing that really is a, a, that they pay attention to a lot is constituents that represent other constituencies. So that's you, you represent patients as well. You represent other member, other constituents of those members of Congress. So talking to your, your patients about things is important. Bringing up your patients' issues to your members of Congress so you can they, they know that you know, you're plugged into an, another network of their voters. Um, it's a huge help for it. And then you know, get everybody involved. Anybody that has an ear, chew it. It's the best things you can the best things you can do to do it. So last, I'll remind you, Text Tooth Party to 345-345. That'll get you signed up for action alerts and make sure you respond to them. Thank you so much for that, Peter. Now, we did have a question coming in the chat before we move on to the next slide. And this is open for any of our panelists to answer. Um, the question is, can you explain what it's like meeting with staffers from the representatives and senators? Um, it does seem intimidating. And we had a lot of good discussion that started to become generated around that question. So thank you for that, Dr. Johnson and any of our panelists. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in and a lot of good advice in the chat. This is chat, everybody. Um, I, I would, my advice is to be confident in what you know and let your knowledge kind of do you. Instead of trying to study the talking points to death so that you say exactly what's on the page, you are a dentist, you know these issues, you know your patients, speak from the heart and, um, and, and try to make an impact, you, you know, use your passion. And, and like Mike said in the chat, it is fun, like once you get going. And I think the other thing, it's good to, to have a little bit of rehearsal it's important in these meetings to know when to talk uh, enough. And, and I think sometimes people don't talk enough or they talk way too much. So it's finding a way to you know, get that practice of making your point and then you know, being like waiting to, to make it an interactive um, environment. And if I can add just the one thing that I think is important, remember that these people are human as well. They're, they're not, superstars they're not you know robots they're just human beings nothing will get you uh talking to a member of congress quicker than driving them somewhere and having them eat a hot dog while you're trying to get to the next event it's the most amusing thing you'll ever watch uh so just remember they put their pants on one look at a time too most of the staffers are young in their 20s they're you know wide-eyed they want to change the world just talk to them you don't have to be the utmost expert and the other thing is like if you don't know the answer to the question, say it. It's perfectly fine if you don't have an answer. Get them in touch with your your lobbyists and the 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 federal and state staff. That's what we're here for. Those are incredible points, and I I think I mean what's echoing in my head is be confident, be genuine, be sincere. They're people just like you, and you know getting involved in advocacy is easy. Just to you know connect with somebody. Um, and that's, you know, back to an, another point on the um, medical loss ratio and um, some additional data from HPI. Um, they were showing that 
there's some there's certainly traction in the rest of the country and and participation toward a grassroots effort for um, dentists to establish a law setting me medical loss ratio. You can see here um, on the slide, 42% very likely, 39% um, somewhat likely. I mean that's you know 80% of the country who said you know they're willing to participate in grassroots effort toward um, these efforts, and that's um, that's exciting to see. Um, you know, to mobilize a strong percentage of members toward an issue is incredible. Um, the other thing that I see, at least for new dentists, you know, very eager to get involved is with student loan reform. Um, managing student debt often comes up as a number one issue for new grads. And I just wanted to point out and make sure that everybody here tonight was aware that the ADA advocates on our behalf with several student loan reform bills. Um, there's um, the next, in one of our slides here. Yeah, there we go. Um, there's a list of all the things that we're working toward right now. And at least the one that stands out to me is the Student Loan Refinance and Recalculation Act. It would be pretty great if origination fees were eliminated, borrowers could refinance federal loans, and accrual of interest would be delayed for borrowers in residency. I mean, these things are are fantastic things that we're working toward right now. And I mean, each one of these points is incredibly important. So for all of you working on these issues on our behalf, thank you. Um, and if anybody wants to know more, head over to ada.org slash advocacy, um, you know, send an email to Mike, uh, Chad, Peter. I mean, these guys are more than willing to help, I'm sure. Um, so um, back to some of the other um advocacy that we have um is anybody else attending i know there was a question earlier anybody else attending lobby day anybody thinking about attending lobby day Let's i was there the actions in the chat yeah <laughs> i was i attended a few years back and it was a, an incredible experience being in dc um it's awesome um so feel free to jump in on the chat for questions um and while we, you know, we're going to, Arnell and I are following there and trying to keep things straight, but um, I'm going to have one more question here for Andrew regarding um, something we hear from new dentists, um, something that we've been talking about, you know, as a new dentist, speaking up might feel intimidating, um, your voice might be falling on deaf ears, and Andrew, you've accomplished so much, where do you feel, um, you know, in your experience that we can, can, can successfully contribute and um, be in the conversation when we feel like we're less experienced than others in the room? Yeah, I think our, our, everybody's experience is, is valuable here, right? And um, I think everything that, that Chad and Peter said about interacting with legislators um, makes a lot of sense. And having a you know, digging into this stuff and having an understanding of it so you can see the way that it's going to impact you is going to be the best way to be effective when you interact with folks that are going to help us get the policy things that um, we want. And, you know, some of these things are straightforward, like let's not have interest accrue on student loans when people are in residency. Encourage people to get more training before they get out there. Like there's not a lot of people who are gonna disagree with that, but you need to have the, the like momentum to do it. And then one other thing I was thinking when we were all talking is one easy thing to do is, you know, follow your local legislators, your representatives, you know, not national, like state and uh, national too, but your state reps and legislators, that's where most, um, a lot of dental policy is set. Um, so if you can't go to DC, there's a chance that you might be able to go down the street to a coffee shop and meet with them for, you know, open hours that they have. And that's how I started meeting with my local representative. And I, you know, I, I see every time he tweets out or Instagrams out that he's going to have his, his open hours and I go down there so we can shake hands and know each other. And he knows that the things that are important to us. And if every dentist is doing that, you know, that's, that can make a huge difference. And I've talked with people in, in some of the smaller states in New England who have, you know, personal re relationships with legislators. That moves a lot, you know, because when you can tell the story and they can feel it, then they can advocate best for, for us. So, you know, learn the, the things that are, are impacting us, you know, 
think about them and then, you know, don't keep them to yourself, share them with your colleagues, for, with your, your friends who are going through the same stuff and then share them with the people who can help change things. And I think if a lot of, enough people are doing that, that's a way to, to get the, the change that we want to see happen. Yeah, I think for a lot of us getting started is a challenge. And and Peter, I know that um, there's um, some action team leaders. Can you go into some of that information for us? Yeah, so uh, we have an action team leader program where every member of Congress has a dentist uh, assigned to them as a touch point to, that they're responsible to build a relationship and start to you know work with those members. So we have a dentist we can go to to... Um, anytime we need to talk to a member of Congress about anything or their staff uh, as a point person. Um, I have the list. We're going to, we're in the process of redoing them for the 118th Congress. We had some minor changes <laughs> for, for this year with redistricting and, uh, and everything. So once I get those lists, feel, please feel free to get in touch with me. I can tell you which, what dentist is um, your point person for your member of Congress. Also, you know, talk to your states. The states usually do the assigning for them um, to decide who their, their ATL is for each member. Um, volunteer to be one. Um, if your your district doesn't have an ATL at the moment, we are more than well willing to have you. We have a lot of great resources to train you up, but it's also a good way to find mentors and find other people. Just, you know, get in touch with me anytime you want, and we can get to the list for your state. And you can find out who's involved and who's assigned to who. Um, I noticed I'm just through the with the chat. I think there was a question about signing up for um, the local representatives for lobby day. Um, we do that for you, or your states will do that for you. So when you register, register with um, the address that you're most familiar with. So if you know if you're closer, if you want to register with the district your practice is in, or the uh, your home district pick one um also there's notes at the bottom that you can tell us like hey i practice in another district or and we'll get you try to get you set up with meetings um for both members uh the big thing that we do that at lobby day for those who haven't attended there's a strategy lunch uh that's probably the most important part of the day because it's the first time that everybody from the states get get together and go over uh, their schedules and kind of put people into meetings and add people on. Uh, but we will do our best to uh, make sure everybody's assigned to a meeting earlier, earlier, earlier register, the more likely we are to get you something. So uh, just do that. And while you're at it, uh, Peter, by district, we did have a follow-up question. Do you mean ADA district? Just want to make sure um, all of our participants are aware. No, I, I mean by um, congressional district. There we so, go. Congressional, yeah. district. Congressional district and Senate, Senate. So every member of Congress has someone assigned to them, or at least we try to get every member of Congress. Assigned to awesome. We did have a second question come in from Dr. Kim, and this is also open to any of our panelists to answer. The question is, do we need to make arrangements in advance to meet with our local House of Representatives um, or, or Congress person for lobby day? Nope, we did that for you. Awesome. That makes it easy, you know, show up, meetings are set, you can follow along with the um, other members there and um, lobby days is cool if you guys can get there. Um, but even starting local, like Peter said, you know, action team leaders are available. Um, once the once the list is up and, and together, as, as Peter mentioned, you know, kind of um, sorting that out and organizing it a little better. Um, it'll be a great resource for everybody. Um, so we're going to leave up the slide there, five ways to get involved in advocacy, but um, there's, um, you know, the floor is open for any other questions. There's certainly some some additional time here for our panelists. Um, Arnell posted a question here. Do we need to make arrangements? Nope, done for you. So I think we're um, you know, as Dr. Kim mentioned, like, how do we, how do we get time with them? You know, it'll be scheduled. Um, and it's, it's easy that way. Um, there's, there's certainly, um, people here tonight that have been there. Um, so if you have any other questions, uh, feel free and jump in here. Um, let's see anybody. Um, I can jump in while we're waiting for some questions. This is Chad, if you don't mind, Dr. Larson, I, I was just going to take the opportunity to, uh, publicly thank Dr. Tonelli uh, for all the work he did on the Massachusetts Ballot Initiative. He really made this 
as a spokesperson for the campaign, um, a lot of hours put in, um, and he was a part of, um, maybe you all saw it on some of the ADA postings, but Dr. Shepley, uh, ADA president, Dr. Snelly was part of it. We did a, a barnstorming tour across the, the state of Massachusetts on uh, election day. It was, it was just a blast. Um, and, uh, and Dr. Tanelli was a, a part of, of uh, you know, that final, we had a little party with some students, dental students at the end, Dr. Tanelli was there, but I just was gonna tell a quick anecdote. He and I were on with uh, the Boston Globe editorial board, and which eventually endorsed a yes on question two. And I mean, Dr. Tanelli, he was always just open to any kind of recommendations on how to be a spokesperson got some training from a staff member of the ADA, uh, Catherine Marullo, I think she might even be on the call, but always approached it with, um, you know, humbleness, just willing to learn. And um, we're in this uh, Globe editorial, um, you know, getting tough questions. Why, why, you know, maybe this will make dental premiums go up, et cetera. And he just handled it like a champ. So anyway, kudos to him. Thanks, Chad. I'm glad I had the right time for the, the editorial board interview. No, but it was it was a blast. And uh, well, it was a lot of work, um, but it was it. We couldn't have been nearly as effective without the whole ADA team rallying behind it and our and the Massachusetts team. There's a lot of people whose job it is is to support dentists. We're lucky to have that. And it's really important that dentists continue to support that because that system, you know, didn't come from nowhere. And, you know, we have to, it's, it's important. It's a, it's a tool. It's a really important tool in, you know, shaping the environment that we work in. So yeah, thanks to everybody. It was, uh, it was a very interesting fall and just really glad it had uh, a positive result. Yeah, we were, um, Dr. Tanelli and I and Mike, and Dr. Shepley, we were at this, you know, watch party and it was all these other elections were getting called, but our, and our percentages were so great that we're coming in, uh, but the, no, no one on the press would call our, call the question and say we won. And um, uh, they actually, we had press contact us and say, do you all want to declare victory? And no, we want you to tell us that we won. So anyway, it was, it was kind of a cool experience. I see a question in the, the chat that I can address from uh, Dr. Kim. Where are we with other states in passing something like question two? And how close are we with passing something at a national level on medical loss ratios? I did mention that we, uh, at, the, at the outset, and Mike Graham did too, that we have, we estimate uh, upwards to 20 states that'll be pursuing this next year. And a number of them have asked for funding from our grant program for SPA. Um, you know, this is, it, it's a very different environment on the legislative side uh, versus a ballot question. And we have a little bit of an advantage on the ballot side because it was direct to voters. We were really playing to you all strengths. Um, it was so cool to see a yes on two uh, 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 scroller happening in, in dentist offices. And uh, here's a, I don't know if you guys can see it, but here's a yes on two button. A hygienist would be wearing this and a patient could ask, you know, what's that about? So on the legislative side, it's a little bit different, but we want to use that connection that you all have to patients with that, um, with, with regard to that. So the other part of this is the national solution on, um, on a, a medical loss ratio. It's a very heavy lift. It's not something that we're going to, you know, drop the ball on. We are going to pursue it. Um, but th there's a sort of a, interplay between state legislation and federal. The more states we can get to pass it, the more attention the federal government will get it. And so we're hoping that it'll be a, a, an echo effect. Thanks for following along on the chat there, Chad, and just, you know, addressing that right away. Um, and thanks to um, Dr. Kim for, for bringing that question up. We have one other question here, and then I think we're going to um, move toward wrapping things up. But um, to our panelists, um, what specific advocacy group is addressing student loan reform, and um, what's the biggest point there that we're working toward? Well, uh, let me let me take a shot at that. And, and Roxanne is also on the 
on this call. She can address that as well. But um, we actually work with a number of different groups, uh, uh, whether they're professional groups, other healthcare professional groups. Um, we also work with student groups. Um, but it's, again, this is an issue that's really prime for our uh, dental students and new dentists to be involved in. If, if members of Congress don't hear from you, then they're not gonna think it's a problem. Um, and you should know that there's a whole bunch of staffers up on Capitol Hill that have debt just like you all do. Well, maybe not just like you do. Um, you have significant debt, but they have debt as well. So they feel for you on this issue and they understand this issue very well because they live it themselves. Roxanne, do you have anything to add? Yes, thanks, Mark. The only thing I would add is that I know some of you may be members of dental specialty groups, what we call the Organized Dentistry Coalition or ODC, and we work with that group closely on advocating for student loan reform. For example, some of you may be oral surgeons. We work very closely with Amos on what's called the Ready Act, which would defer the interest that you pay during residency until after you finish. Thanks. Thanks, guys, for you know jumping in on that last question. Um, and as you can see, there's there's a whole lot going on. There's a lot to stay engaged with, a lot to be involved with. So um, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, don't hesitate to ask. And um, we we sure have a whole lot of resources at our fingertips with the the ADA. Um, and thank you again to our panelists. You guys are wonderful. Um, so so great to chat with you tonight. Um, thank you everybody for um, attending. Um, we have a um, QR code here that you can um, snap for a survey. So don't leave just yet. Um, we'll pull that up in a second here. So as the QR code comes up, um, I'm just going to jump back to our panelists for a few last super short questions. Um, so in very quick, brief answers, Peter, name a stat you'd like to see change in the future. Uh, response rates to our, our action alerts. Awesome. Um, I think we can accomplish that. Um, Mike, a piece of advice you'd offer to future leaders in advocacy? Get involved now. It's kind of like investing. The earlier you do it, the better, right? Um, and then Chad, a resource you'd recommend for people who want to jump in and geek out on ad advocacy? Uh, I would say Politico is one, The Hill is another, if you're interested in federal. Um, at the state level, you know, I think you should get involved with your state dental society. Um, we also have what's called the GP, GPAU. Uh, that's the Government uh, and Public Affairs uh, Update. If you want access to that, shoot me a line and we'll get you, get you that resource. But it's a great way to stay up to date. Mine was not as pithy as the others. Excuse me. So good. And last but not least for our panelists, um, Dr. Tonelli, uh, a favorite saying or quote that you can leave us with? Oh, man. Um, wow, but, you know. This is, this is one that I, I work with my father. He's also a dentist. And this is one that he hammers on. I can't believe I'm going to say it, but I call him the, uh, the well, it's uh, patients don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And um, that's, that's something to just live by even though it's it's it is what it is it's true love that love that um don't forget the qr code um fill out that survey it's going to help us a ton to improve these talks improve these town halls because we got a few more of them planned so um stay tuned here Yes, we want to say thank you so much for everybody being here and be on the lookout for our next town hall. It's going to be in Q1 um, 2023, and it's going to be on career paths in dentistry. The date is still to be determined, but you're definitely going to be hearing and seeing about it um, all over. Um, you can see some of our contact information here on the screen. And once again, we want to thank you all for being here this evening. Until next time, friends. Bye now. Thanks, everybody.